We're almost done with this final review, just a little bit more to go. The number n of bacteria present in a culture at time t in hours obeys the law of uninhibited growth, n of t equals 400 times e to the 0 0.035 t. First question, determine the number of bacteria at time t equals zero hours. Well, right away I can say that's gonna be 400 because this number out in front of an exponential function like this is your initial value. It's your starting value at time t equals zero. So if you actually did plug in zero for t, 0 0.035 times zero would be zero. e to the zero power would be one, and then 400 times one would be 400. To determine the number of bacteria after five hours, we plug in five for t, and we calculate that. 400 times e to the 0 0.035 times five. Now, when you put this into your calculator, you will probably want parentheses around the 0 0.035 times five part, so that it does the multiplication before it raises e to that power. So if you calculate this correctly, if you enter this into your calculator so that the calculator does what you want it to do, it should give you a number that, when you round it to the nearest whole number, is 476. So try that on your calculator. Make sure that's what you get. If that's not what you get, figure out what you did wrong or ask me for help if you still can't figure it out. And then last question, what, when will the number of bacteria reach 2,000? When means what time, what T will make N be 2,000? So we're putting 2,000 in for N and solving for T. So I do that by, first of all, dividing both sides by 400. That gives me E equals 0 0.035T or sorry, e to the 0 0.035t equals 5. Now, how do we undo the e? With the natural log function, take ln of both sides. So ln of e to the 0 0.035t would just be 0 0.035t. And we did take lns of both sides. So on the other side, we got ln of 5. Then divide both sides by the 0 0.035, and t comes out to be the ln of 5 divided by 0 0.035, and that, if you round it to the nearest number of hours, is about 46 hours. Finally, we have some equations and some graphs. Now, without even looking at the graphs, I can tell you that equation A is going to be a straight line with a slope of one third and a y-intercept of one, because it's set up in y equals mx plus b format. Equation b is going to be a parabola that opens downward. I know it's a parabola because of the x squared, and I know it opens downward because of the minus in front of the x squared. I can also tell it's gonna have a y-intercept at zero, three. And there's other things I could figure out if I needed to, like the vertex or x-intercepts. Equation C is going to be a straight line with a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of positive 2, 0, 2. Equation D is going to be another parabola, this time one that opens upward. And the y-intercept is going to be at negative 9. And if you're really paying attention, you might notice that this is an even function. So the graph is going to be symmetric with respect to the y-axis. And if you remember what just plain old y equals x squared looks like, well, this would look like that only shifted down nine spaces. y equals two to the x power minus nine. That's an exponential kind of function or equation, that's the kind that shoots way up as you go off to the right. As x gets big, 2 to the x power gets really, really big. 
And as you go off to the left, it's going to sort of level off. Equation f, y equals x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus 9, that's a fourth degree polynomial. Like the graph of any polynomial, the graph is going to be all in one piece, continuous and smooth. But with a degree of 4, it could have up to 4 x-intercepts and it could have up to three turning points. So that tells you how wiggly the graph could get. And equation g, that's a rational function. The graph of that function is not necessarily continuous. It might be in more than one piece. In fact, we'd have a zero in the denominator when x was either three or negative three. So that's going to be undefined when x is 3 or negative 3. No points on the graph with those x coordinates. We are going to have vertical asymptotes at x equals 3 and x equals negative 3. And by now you should have plenty of clues to match the equations to the graphs. So graph or equation A is this graph down here. Equation B is the downwards opening parabola here. Equation C is the negative slope line here. Equation D is the upwards opening parabola here. Equation E is the exponential graph here. Equation F is the graph here with three turning points. That's also an even function. It's also symmetric with respect to the y axis. And equation G goes with this graph here that's in three separate pieces and has vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, I hope that helped. If you still have any questions or things you want to go over, don't hesitate to contact me. It's been good having you in class. It would have been better having you in class in person for the rest of the semester, but I hope I see most of you around class in the fall or in around campus in the fall. I hope that works out and we're all back and more or less back to normal in the fall. Anyway, good luck on the final and have as, as good a summer as you can.